All right, so if you had told me even a year ago that one day I would be able to use my iPhone and a USB-C cable to shoot tethered images to a computer or an external SD drive connected that would let me shoot ProRes video in 10-bit 422 in a log format and be able to grade it and actually push that grade and make it look really good, I would have said you were crazy. But folks, the future is here. Welcome to iPhone 15. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about iPhone 15, largely from a photography perspective. There is a lot of cool stuff here in terms of imaging, both stills and video, and a lot of other stuff to unpack too. For me personally, the significance of the latest iPhone iteration from Apple is gonna come down to essentially three different things. First off is the camera system, and both of these phones have upgraded cameras from the previous version, and this is quite significant in terms of what you're able to capture. Second of all is USB-C. Apple has moved away from using the lightning port on their phones. We're gonna be using USB-C now, it's more than just a cable change. And finally, we're gonna talk about processing power. The Pro, Pro Max versions of this phone now have the new A17 chip. We have three nanometer chip processing and a new GPU. And this is going to enable a lot of stuff that you can do on these phones. They've become quite powerful. iPhone 15 starts with a 6.1 inch model with two physical cameras on the back and Apple's A16 processor. The phone features a new durable color infused glass and aluminum design. We also have iPhone 15 Plus, which features the same design, but with a larger 6.7 inch screen size. iPhone 15 Pro features a 6.1 inch screen, gives us three camera lens configuration. It features the brand new A17 processor with an upgraded GPU, the all new action button, and features an aerospace grade titanium frame design. This is one of the lightest Pro models that Apple has produced. And of course, there's also the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which gives us a 6.7 inch screen and a brand new 120 millimeter telephoto lens. And as I mentioned, iPhone 15 has moved away from the lightning port and is now USB-C compatible. So the base models feature USB-C 2.0 compatibility and the Pro models feature USB-C 3.0. All phones are gonna come in a variety of colorways. The ones that you're seeing here, I've got the iPhone 15 in black, I've got the iPhone 15 Plus in pink, and for the Pro models, the iPhone Pro is blue titanium and the Pro Max is natural titanium. So the biggest changes in design that we're gonna see on iPhones this year are gonna be on the Pro and Pro Max models of iPhone 15. So these cameras actually feature a titanium frame, which makes the phone actually a little bit lighter. It is noticeably lighter than last year's iPhone 14. We also have curved and contoured edges, as well as a camera bump that follows suit. And probably the biggest thing you're gonna notice is that the mute switch on the Pro models has been replaced with another button. And we call this the action button. So the action button is very intuitive to use. You simply press and hold it. And so if you press to hold, it will mute the phone by default. If you press it again and hold it, it will go back into ring mode. This is actually customizable in the settings. So if you go into the settings under action button, there's a little slide display here and you can go through and assign this to various things. And this is actually very handy because you can substitute this out for things that you need on your phone quite often. So for me shooting pictures and doing photography, I like to set the action button up to pull up the camera. What's really cool is when you press the action button, phone could be asleep, it will pull up the camera and then you can use the action button again, short pressing to take pictures. And then if you use a long press, it will record video. So it's very well thought out and you can change this around anytime you want. It's really easy to switch. All right, so let's get into the camera system now because I think this is a significant improvement for all four of the iPhone models that we're working with. So with iPhone 15, mentioned earlier, this is a two physical lens design. However, there's actually a third lens that you're able to access in the software. So how does this work? Well, last year with the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max models, we had a 48 megapixel sensor. That has now been trickled down technology-wise into the iPhone 15 models. And so because we're using that 48 megapixel sensor, we're able to actually crop into that to get a zoomed effect, which doesn't use a digital zoom, it's just a crop, so you don't lose any image quality. So we're now able to actually get not only a wide angle, but standard lens, and then also a 2X telephoto lens which I really like. It's actually a great focal length for a phone. When I've been using the iPhone 14 for a year now, one of the things I loved about that is because you could crop in on it and all of a sudden I had essentially what is a 50 millimeter 
your focal length, which got it away from the standard smartphone focal length and allowed me to get a little bit closer in. So that is a huge upgrade now with iPhone 15. In fact, I'm going to say this because I know that when people look at the various iPhone models and they're considering what they want to get in terms of the upgrade to the phone they've got, a lot of factors come into play. And sure, one of those factors is going to be budget. The iPhone Pro models are always more expensive than the standard base models. However, I will say we have gotten to a point with iPhone 15 right now where I think the iPhone 15 models, as far as their camera system goes, if that's a big deal for you, I think these offer one of the most sensible designs that you can get really on any smartphone in the market right now. The fact that it does all this with two lenses, you have a little bit lighter phone, a little bit smaller phone, and you're going to save some money there, and you're still going to have a lot of stuff that you can do with these phones. That being said, though, the Pro and Pro Max do have a little bit more to offer, and we're going to get into that, and I'll explain what's new there. So iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max have three physical lenses. That third lens that we have over the iPhone 15 models is a telephoto lens. This is great for portraits. Now, this is where these two phones are going to differ a little bit because the Pro version has a 77 millimeter focal length, and the Pro Max version has a 120 millimeter equivalent focal length. This is where Apple have done something very impressive. So with longer focal lengths, you need physically larger lenses. So when you look at camera lenses on dedicated cameras, for instance, you're going to notice that the higher the focal length, the bigger the lens gets. And so the problem with designing that for a phone is this, is that you have to comply with the thickness of the phone. People don't really want thicker phones, they want them to be more slim. That creates a problem with longer focal lengths. So iPhone 15 uses what's called a Tenta prism design. So there's a series of prisms that sit underneath the lens. So they've actually taken the entire lens design and innovated on that in that they've compressed it into something that fits within the thickness of the phone. What else is really cool about this is it enables Apple One to save space, but also to give us not only optical image stabilization on that lens, but also a three axis this is sensor-based image stabilization. This is big because I've never seen this on any phone before. You're going to need it with longer lenses. They require more light. They're a little bit shakier in general. And to have something that is this smooth that you can record video with and you can record stills with without a lot of motion blur is really something else. And I think the results that I've been getting off of this have been really good. I will say this, though. This lens does need a lot of light. And there are times where the phone will flip it over if it's not getting enough light for that lens to the standard lens zoom zoomed in. Now, you can't control that. It's just going to be done behind the scenes, if you will. But I think when you consider the context of a smartphone, and it's the phone that you have with you that's going to give you the best quality for what it is, I think that it's definitely going to do that. And I think that people are going to be really impressed. The main 48 megapixel camera offers some new versatility as well. So the Pro and Pro Max phones actually offer three focal length options from one camera. Now these are selectable in the camera app and you can also define in the settings which one of these you want the main camera to default to. So you've got three choices here. There's 24 millimeter, 28 millimeter, and 35 millimeter focal lengths. This is a really interesting way of being able to pull three different wide angle focal primes out of one lens. The method that Apple uses to do this is actually really complex. It's not simply cropping into the middle part of the sensor for each focal length. Essentially, when you take a photo, iPhone captures multiple exposures from the 48 megapixel sensor and it runs this data through its own process called deep fusion. Since it has the information from that sensor across multiple exposures, when this is processed through the neural network, the end result is actually a 24 megapixel image. All the detail and all the quality is delivered in the final file. Calling this simply computational imaging isn't really accurate either because Apple has such a unique pipeline for image processing. The results do speak for themselves and have come from a truly unique process of image creation. So all in all, the three physical lenses in Pro and Pro Max will give you seven different options of focal length. So you've got a macro lens, you've got that ultra wide angle lens, you've now got three standard wide focal length primes, and you've got a portrait focal length all in one phone. And speaking of portraits, another big upgrade that we see in all of the iPhone models this year is that portrait mode has always been a dedicated mode in an iPhone, and now it's actually been integrated 
into just the standard camera mode. So when you lift your phone up to take a picture, and let's say you're just in the standard photo mode, well, these cameras are subject recognition aware. So it knows whether you're trying to shoot a human or an animal. It's going to generally put a box around the face. And the other thing that you're going to see, even in the standard photo mode now, is this little letter F down in the lower left-hand corner. This is an abbreviation for F-stop. In a traditional lens, F-stop indicates how much of your image is in focus and how much background blur you're going to see in the final result. The phone has a much more powerful ability to create what we call a depth map. Now, when you look at a still photograph, still photographs are two-dimensional representations of a three-dimensional space. In other words, they're not 3D like with 3D glasses or some kind of VR headset. It is a 2D space. What a depth map does is it actually maps that out so it's aware in the image of what's closer to the lens and what is further away. So it can create a natural bokeh look to simulate what you would find on a full frame camera lens that is a very wide aperture. What's really cool is it saves that depth map information into the file so you can go edit this at any time. If you're in the Photos app and you go to edit and it's used the portrait mode, you're going to see the ability to actually change the effect that you have there. So obviously a wider aperture is going to give you a more shallow depth of field or you can turn that down and get a much wider depth of field. Another thing that's very cool that will be coming soon is the ability to create content on your phone that supports Apple Vision Pro. It's going to use two of the camera lenses to do this. Something's not available at launch, but it is coming soon. I think for people who are really into VR content, to be able to create that on your phone is just another thing that makes this really awesome. Now, I mentioned the USB-C connection earlier and why this is so important. Now, I realize that Apple have done a lot with lightning connections, and we've been able to see some speed bumps in that in recent years. But USB-C 3, by nature, will support up to 10 gigabits per second of data transfer. So there's a lot you can do with this, and this actually has a lot to do with imaging. So for instance, one of the things that's going to be available in the next few months is that Capture One is going to support tethering. So you'll be able to do live tethering with your phone. This means you can launch Capture One on your computer, you can plug into the phone via USB-C, and you're going to be able to take an image in raw format and it will come up on the computer. So this is great for people who want to shoot in some kind of studio situation and you want to use your phone. It's going to be very possible and it's going to be very cool. Which brings us to video. Now this is something that is not brand new in iPhone models, but a while back Apple gave us the ability to record in ProRes format. ProRes is a codec which is not nearly as compressed as something like MP4. And so basically a lot more data is retained in the file. This allows you to do things when you want to get into color grading and pushing the exposure and you're able to do a lot more without getting noise or artifacts in the image. The downside of this is that ProRes in video requires a much larger amount of storage because the file size is pretty big. Now we have USB-C connectivity, USB-C 3.0, and we have the ability to use an external SD drive and you can record your footage here. What I love about this is it literally is plug and play. When you have the camera app open and you select the ProRes option at the top, you're going to see a little USB-C indicator at the bottom. You go ahead and hit record. It just puts all of your files on the SD drive. Now what's really cool is when I put this SD drive into the computer and I open it up to look at it, well, it's just a file structure like any dedicated camera would give you. It says 100 Apple, there's some folders in there and you're going to see all of your files. So you can get an SD drive. This one is a one terabyte drive. You can get them much larger and you can record a lot of really incredible looking video onto your drive and then you can go edit this in Final Cut Pro or something else. And this is a big game changer for phones. Another big addition with iPhone 15 is the ability to record what we call log footage. Now log is short for logarithmic and it's essentially ungraded footage. It's going to come out looking very washed out. But what it's done is when you look at this footage, it's going to contain all the shadow detail and all the highlight detail that's possible off of the sensor. And that's why log footage is really important to shoot in. So what this does is it gives you the ability to go in and you can use a LUT or you can use some kind of color transformation in post-production and you can actually grade your footage and you can push it pretty far. There's a lot you can do with this and I think the footage looks absolutely outstanding as you can see in the sample stuff that I took here and this was done in fairly low light and the noise performance is exceptional on these cameras. This is for me probably one of the coolest features on iPhone 15 and I realize it's a feature that most people will probably never want to use necessarily because they don't want to take the time to color grade or they're not that serious about doing video, they just want to capture a moment. But I think about all the way back when I had my first iPhone, which was the 3G. 
And there was no video support initially on early iPhones. And when they later models ended up supporting video, it was really shaky and it wasn't very usable. And we've come so far with image stabilization and all these things that allow you to take something that fits in your pocket and get professional results with. And this is something that I think is very significant. And the fact that we're at a point now where you can use that USB-C connection to record to an external drive and you can get that full resolution video file on ProRes, it is so impressive to me. And I've really had a lot of fun using this. And I think this brings us to some other key points with this too, when we have the A17 processor and we have improvements to things like the cinematic mode. That was pretty crude when it first came out. And now we're able to get things with depth map going on that I think are really very impressive and very stunning when you look at them. So a few observations on iPhone 15. Now with all four of the models that they have to choose from, it's another year and we have better improvements and better smartphones. What does this mean? Well, for me, it comes down to those three areas. Obviously being a photographer, the camera capabilities are going to be very important and the camera upgrades are huge in this year's phones. The second thing is the connectivity issue. And the fact that we have USB-C now, I think is actually a really good thing. And I think that it's going to enable people who want to have those pro features to do a lot more with their phone. And then finally, especially with the A17 chip, is that we can do more with our phones than we could before. They're very high powered. In fact, there's way more power in this phone than there ever was in laptops that I used to use years ago. And so we've really come a long way with these things. And one of the things that's very impressive to me is that when you consider what the role of a smartphone should be in your life, it's a device that you have with you that allows not only for communication now, but to be able to organize your life, keep track of dates, calendars, reminders. You can have notifications go off and to be able to use a camera system to capture the memories, both in still photography and video that are important in your life. I think that's one thing. And I think Apple have accomplished that long ago, but the fact that we're doing it so well now and we're getting results that are really on par with dedicated camera systems. I would love to know what you guys think on this. This is an incredible phone and I wanna thank Apple for including me in their launch event this year. And uh, this is really exciting. I really have been enjoying these phones so far. So if you have any questions, drop them below and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.